I mean, what a week. We are about to dive in, but what a week, what a day, what a last couple hours. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, there's I no mean, way to talk about it. We've got Randy Sklar. Say hello to the people, Randy. How are you guys doing? So happy to be on this podcast with you, Ben. This is crazy. It's so wild. We have we have Jason Sklar with us. Uh, end of days, end of days. We're on the steps of freedom. We just need to get into the rotunda and we'll be fine, I think. Oh, my God. I've been getting a little rotunda during the lockdown, my friend. Mm-hmm. And we are rotunda. here. Dan- rotunda is rofunda, is what <laughs> I like. <laughs> and we're here with Daniel Van Kirk. Hello, friend. Hello, hello. This is a uh, Dumb People Town Last Week on Earth crossover of sorts. Heck it's so yeah. exciting to have all of you guys here at once. Yeah. I mean, this might be the last week. Of- I, I- it, yeah. a, a truer title of a podcast there never was. I mean, we spent November 7th together, that beautiful Saturday. We might as well spend January 6th together, too. I yeah. mean, Jesus, Ben. I mean, this is more Ooh. of a truthful podcast than my brother, my brother, and me, which is actually <laughs> as true as it gets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty wild. I- I'm not even calling this January 6th. I refer to it as December 37th. <laughs> And I believe it's going to keep counting until 14 days from now when 2021 will officially begin. We should get a new calendar. Right? Dude, Make that dude, happen, Ben. December 51st, we are hanging out. Mm-hmm. Can, we, can we just have Nick Cage design it? Yeah. I think that yes. would be like version, wait, is, it, is today the third skull from the fourth dinosaur spine? I think mm-hmm. that, that's when we're planning on doing this. When the fourth dinosaur spine hits the rotunda, we revolt. Yeah. I'm going yeah. deep into history. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jay. Do your cage. Everybody's All right. right there. All right. I'm just enjoying it. It's like That's great. That's a great it's Owen Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, great <laughs> Owen Wilson. Really? Yeah. I love the way you pressed your nose in for it and everything. All right. <laughs> wow. Very incredible. So um, I, I mentioned it in the opening, but for those who want to hear us just recap it in words today Mm -hmm. when the ceremonial occurrence of the electoral college just being certified, the votes that are already certified, just being counted and said, yep, we got a new president. A bunch of Republican senators and Congress people said 100 Congress people, 11 senators said they were going to not certify. They were going to stand against this horror of a free and fair election. I tweeted before any of the crazier shit happened. Do we still have a democracy asking for a friend? <laughs> yeah. And then moments later, people <laughs> apparently stormed. Not. Yeah, apparently not. People mm-hmm. stormed the Capitol building, weren't even stopped. Capitol police let them in and yeah. they proceeded to kind of orderly walk through, take some selfies, then break into Nancy Pelosi's office, climb the walls of the actual chambers of both houses, sit right. at the at Nancy Pelosi's seat where Pence was moments earlier. Yeah. And, Someone uh, grabbed a lectern. Someone grabbed a lectern and just left. Yeah. Oh, it looked wow. like Maddie Ryan, the great Chicago comic, but just for the record, everyone's it was not Maddie not Ryan. Maddie Ryan. Had to come out <laughs> hard Maddie telling Ryan. people that is not him. Yeah. <laughs> I just so, love the fact that like last night, all of the American Democrats were like Hey, I can't believe we did this. And Best then today, all the American Republicans were like, hold my child support check. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I should probably change the name of this podcast to Dumb People Country. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there you go. It's getting bigger. It feels it like it is getting bigger. And the, it's, get, you know what it is. And this is what we've sort of learned. And as, as Dan compiles the show for our podcast, you know, and, and gets the stories sent to him, I, I think what we've sort of, observed more recently is like how brazen the dumb is Mm. it used to be that people were like you do something dumb and you got caught and you were like ah it's embarrassing now Mm -hmm. there's just it's brazen Mm -hmm. yeah it's all that's all because the president 100 percent. he just has empowered idiots to think they could lead the planet yeah right right yeah which which i mean maybe i mean true (laughs) is it is this the day when america became florida I mean, that is my question. Like, did we, the uh, great I, merging. Uh, yeah. Jay and I, Jay and I, have often said that if you were to do a remake of Planet of the Apes today, the apes would take over. They would 
learn technology really quickly. Mm -hmm. Then they wouldn't want to rule us. That would be too much work. They'd all want to become influencers. Like they'd want, <laughs> and they probably have their own fire festival that would kind of work. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, they'd pull it off. Ja they Rule, hundred percent. And would just they would be a fan of that. I mean, how many baboons do I have to blow to get some water for these people? <laughs> <laughs> More than you think. <laughs> Uh, until I'm red in the ass. <laughs> That's the only reading that'll be taking place in America, even currently. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Jeez. I mean, so it was. It's just shocking. I mean, again, like in our lifetime, Ben and I, and I remember, like, remember when we killed Bin Laden, and I say yeah. we because the four of us were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember well, we, we didn't want to reveal that, that but. We I'm were sorry. sealed teammate. We were sealed teammate. We were right. teammate. Dan Dan was just there with the uh, the Coors Light, mm -hmm. and uh, we were there to to kick some ass. We yeah, got Dan ready. was doing loss prevention for the caves. Yeah, <laughs> we, a lot of apprehensions. <laughs> it was incredible. Our moment when our guns jammed and Dan just threw the Coors Light at Bin Laden's head, bonked him out. Hey, that is technically a bullet. It's silver, yeah. but it's, it's still a bullet. bullet. <laughs> Kills the werewolf. And the mountains right. were blue. So we the mountains were blue, so we knew that he was out cold. So uh, <laughs> no, but the idea that like that night was an unbelievable night. It was an unbelievable night for Twitter. It yeah, you've always said that was your first favorite night on Twitter. Yeah, I, right. Because it happened kind of early on in Twitter, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people, the comedians were unbelievable. Like people just gathered at the White House. So you saw people storm the Capitol building today and create. Yeah damage and create fear and people had to be hidden and they were knocking stuff down when we killed bin laden people gathered at the white house and just started having a party like outside the gates like <laughs> you know jonah ray had one of our favorite tweets of all time he said uh r.i.p bin laden now go make god laugh <laughs> fantastic. i mean just fantastic uh, so it was like those oh, you God. were just you were watching all of your favorite people write the greatest things ever about this terrible person who'd done some really bad things to America. Now it's like our kids are doing bad stuff to our to our house. They're trying to burn it down from the inside. Yes. So many things I want to say based on that. First of all, just reminded me of my own darkest, worst, most show businessy thought was one time I was driving by the Laugh Factory and I thought, I kind of hope I die just so I could make it on the marquee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> Any way, by any means necessary. Yeah, that's right. But mm -hmm. at the same time, today in some way is the best day ever on Twitter, not just because the Twitter action was hot. I don't know if you heard this because it happened right before air here, but Twitter just finally froze Trump's Twitter account only for 12 hours, mm -hmm. but he's frozen for the next 12 hours. Mm -hmm. He's frozen for the next 12 hours. Pence unfollowed him. Well, did you see what else Pence did? did he? Yeah. Oh, Pence wow. made his header photo. On his official Twitter account, his header photo is a picture of Kamala and Joe Biden. No, what? it's not. I swear to God. Yes. What? Yes. If, unless it got changed, I could show you the screenshots. I'm going to Twitter right now. Also, Mike underscore also, Pence, six million followers. His header photo this afternoon. It was is. Changed. Yeah. No, no. I, and it used to be Randy and me on Conan when we did our yeah, set on that's Conan. Unbelievable. <laughs> I do think it's great. And this Pence just announced this too. He's doing an improv show at Nowhere Comedy Club right. on December 39th. Yep. <laughs> it used to be a picture of Paul Lind and Liberace saying my two favorite straights. <laughs> <laughs> Let's attack the rotunda. <laughs> I mean, and so, so Jay and I were in Indianapolis. We tell this story and we did this on, we wrote this joke while we were in at the Bloomington Comedy Club at the Comedy Attic, which I hope reopens when this world For unfucks sure. itself. Jay and I were on stage. Well, when we landed in in uh, Indianapolis, we had we landed. So you're flying from L.A. and we flew the day we had a show. So we cut it super close. We're like, we're landing at five in Indianapolis. We got to drive an hour to get down there so that we're ready for the show. You've traveled. You're not feeling good. You were up mm -hmm. at four in the morning. It, it, you're just not in the headspace. Certainly mm -hmm. not in the headspace to then land in Indianapolis and then wait on the tarmac for an hour. Oh, so, so we're waiting on the tarmac for an hour, and they get on the on the intercom and they say, you know, the reason why I have to wait is that Mike Pence is here. So then Jay and I, you can continue, Jay. Yeah, we said that uh, the reason why we had to wait so long was that Mike Pence. This is what we're speculating. Mike Pence found out that a plane tried to enter the hangar from the backside. And uh, he <laughs> he does, that. so he he went up into the air traffic control thing and tried to reprogram it so it would enter sure. in the front way the way he was God hoping he would get hit by lightning because that's what you need to switch it out. 
You do. <laughs> yeah, electricity will change the way it feels. Will it change your sexual orientation? He hopes. That or it'll really make you into weirder stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well, how sure. bad is Trump that now he's that this is the good guy? This is the guy we're like, hey, look at this guy. Yeah. He's talking some sense. The that's, bar, man. that's the biggest best barometer for how our country is going is we keep having these monsters running the country and then a new monster comes and we're like god please bring back the old monster mm -hmm. yeah george yeah. bush is like i'll be at the inauguration you're like damn remember him but yeah. like what's crazy is my seven-year-old came you know i'm watching all this crazy stuff happen and people hanging off of things on tv and she's like what's going on and i had to like how did you unpack from that? the beginning I didn't even know what to say. Well, you might as well have just gotten all the tough conversations in. You're like, look, when a man really cares about a woman for the night, <laughs> he, <laughs> she he in, thinks he she cares about him. Yeah. <laughs> and they both swipe right. Uh, so like, no. hey, so, honey, remember when you have too much, you eat all of your Halloween candy and you want to throw up everywhere, but you stay up all night and you throw everything around your room and mommy mm -hmm. and daddy want to like smack you around. Okay. That's the way all those people are behaving right now. Yeah. 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 Remember when that baby, yeah. The, when that baby was crying and we all hated it, that's our president. Yeah. <laughs> but Ben, to go back to what you were saying about Twitter, like shutting him down for 12 hours, unless he removes the tweets, that's all he has to do is delete those tweets. First of all, as though he tweeted anything today that he hasn't been tweeting yeah. since early November or the last four years. And then Matt Oswalt, Patton's brother, had the one of my favorite tweets. He goes, Great. This is like taking away John Wilkes Booth's SAG card right after the play. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Or it's like, or it's really even with the 12 hours, it's more like taking away his gun just till morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a holding period, which works so well for gun regulation in our country. In All this does is going to make him be able to grab even worse tweets to post at 2 p.m. tomorrow. But by the way, think about that. That like John Wilkes Booth was our one of our nation's greatest actors. Can you yeah. imagine if like Christian Bale just was like, I but he's not from our country. Christian Bale's not. It would have to be like The Rock, George Wahlberg. Clooney, or The Rock, it would have to be Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Yeah, Wahlberg. Yeah, there you go. Like, dude, you gotta fight. You're not gonna fucking believe That's it. That's good. Now, fighting. Jay, you go. Now, Jay, you do it. <laughs> dude, I told Johnny. I told Johnny, you gotta get the gun ready, or else mm -hmm. we can't shoot the guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ben. <laughs> ben, you got a Wahlberg in the chamber? Sure. Right, right before he shoots me, he goes, "Come on, come on, feel the vibrations." <laughs> there you <laughs> go. I feel like he would just be like, dude, I don't even have to punch you. All I gotta do is flex. <laughs> That's good. That's I very good. Fascinate you with a fucking look, dude. You wanna fucking do this? I'll do this. I'll kill you on cardio alone, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fine, don't listen to me. Be like Donnie. See how that works out. <laughs> That's a very good. That's a very oh, good. The best the best. Best. But Dan it would be best. like that. It would be like that caliber actor taking a shot, taking out our president. Unreal, man. Yeah. 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 And, and all of them have so much work that they anyway. Our next story, we have to move on. Let's do it. Because we could talk about this for an hour and a half. Know, There's so much. That's only the tip of the iceberg of this last sinking ship of a week yeah, that we're yeah. heading towards. Uh, before that, there was the shitstorm and bombshell of Trump trying to intimidate and harass the Georgia Republican Secretary of State, Rasmus, and I believe who also played Cliff Clavin on Cheers. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Rasberger, whatever his name Raff, was. Raffenberger. 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 Raffenberger sounds like a chocolate that your grandmother gives you, and it tastes like black licorice. You're like, <laughs> we don't want it. Because it is black licorice. We don't want <laughs> She thinks it's licorice. chocolate. It just like it give you She's like, it's dark chocolate. You're like, no, that's black no. licorice. Why does it have three wrappers? <laughs> <laughs> so when you open it up at a Broadway show, everyone is pissed. Yes, right. Yes. So Trump calls this guy, tried to get him on the phone. You know you've lost your mojo as a president when you had to try 18 times to get someone on the phone. <laughs> The 19th attempt to get some on, talks to him for an hour and tried everything from begging and buttering him up to, to, to mob style saying like, this would be very, very bad for you yeah. and for your lawyer if you don't recalculate. There's nothing wrong with saying you're recalculating the yeah. results. Just and find me. Just find me 11,780. Yeah. Pretend, pretend you're a Garmin in 2007. Just recalculate. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Just yeah, find right. me 11,780 less gullible idiots in this country, please. It's like Trump. If you needed over 11,000 votes in Georgia, you should have asked Stacey Abrams. Yeah, She'll, exactly. She can get those votes. She'll she can get them get for you. you. 
Someone said, uh, can Stacey Abrams, uh, does she have any of the vaccines? Because that's who I'd call to start distributing those. <laughs> yeah, she'll get it out. Yeah, because that's the whole thing here, too. I tweeted today that Democrats protest for people's rights. Republicans protest against people's mm -hmm. rights. So everybody's like, oh, Stacey yeah. Abrams didn't concede because they blocked millions of voters. They took so many people off of the rolls. So right. she conceded eventually once they could, they lost in court, in the court system. Trump is, is fighting for a legit election saying, please just make shit up. Yeah, right. Wild. Yeah. And, and it and feels like guy. three three months ago. Yeah, Rapid, that, was I know, and that, happened, ago. that was five days ago. And you're just listening to that call and we're listening to the call and we're like, and then they're like, some woman gets on the phone call and you think it's like Raffensperger's like sister or mom or whatever and her wife or whatever. And she's like, we don't, that's the wrong data. You know, it's like the woman <laughs> in the background going, that's the wrong, you, you got the wrong data. Tell us of Andy Potts from Ghostbusters. We got right, another right. one. So she when, was yelling. She was mad. It's, it's her husband on the line. She's right. mad that he's not saying. They had to get the wrong data. Up. And she's like, I'm going to have to get on the phone and yeah. say, tell him it's the wrong data. It's the wrong data. Tell him it's the wrong data. And she's, he's like, shh, shh, he's on, I can't. And, shh. Shh. and she's like, goes to another phone because you know it's a landline. Try to use the dial up. Dial up. And she's like, it's the wrong data. It's the wrong data. You got the wrong data. I tried to tell him to tell you, but it's the what wrong I data. love. What I love is that when he was going so hard at Ben Roethlisberger, and yeah. the guy and <laughs> and the guy is like yeah. trying to evade him, and then he goes hard at Ben Roethlisberger on Twitter, and the guy yep. responds back and just says like the truth's going to come out because yeah. of course he knew he taped the goddamn call. Right. Is anyone talking to Trump? If if you, I don't even care if you have to walk past Trump, you better turn your voice memos on on your tape phone. It. Like oh, whatever interaction you have, you better tape. Right? I mean, to me, it's well, like Jay, Jay and I are like, who? I mean, Snoop did this this past week, and I don't know if we'll talk about Snoop and Eminem getting into it with each other, but no, like, I didn't hear about this, but please bring oh, that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop, Snoop started it. Snoop dissed Eminem, and or Eminem dissed Snoop didn't Snoop include Eminem. On the Club. Yeah, didn't include Eminem on his like top ten rappers of all time. But and, Eminem said he didn't care about that. He was like, it was at the very end where he's like, I just don't think he's any good. Like he just right. had to like be. He was like, if if I'm not in your top, that's fine. Like everybody has their top. Right. But then he was like, but you didn't need to go off and say I suck. Right. And so like, Snoop, so then he went after Snoop in a song on a thing, and it's like Eminem fires. I'm like, listen, who is trying to upset Eminem? Like <clears throat> if you're if you're a woman or you're a DJ trying to like, or a MC trying to go after Eminem, he has got a loud mega. He is going to shout you down. It's a dumb yeah. idea. Yeah. He, he makes his fans drive off, off bridges in his own songs. Yeah. Those are the fans that love him. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that was Dido. And that he made Dido do that. I don't yeah, know. Have you heard from Dido no. since then? No, you she haven't. Did. I wonder she why. She well, she died. Died. she puts the died in Dido. Thank That's you. Right. She does. Yeah, she does. That's also bonkers because, I mean, everybody likes Snoop, but no one thinks Snoop's a great rapper. Just empirically, Eminem is far better rapper. Snoop's like lazy. Like, has he ever rapped faster than this or better than this? He yeah. sounds like a like a Looney Tunes rapper. But I'm sure I'm gonna get. Book. I'm sure yeah. I'm gonna get fought, like flame for this in the comments. Yeah. And and also, it's okay because I don't claim to be right. But like, w since drop it like it's hot. And then he went like Snoop Lion reggae for three months. Like, uh, and I love Snoop. I think he is I iconic and so legendary much. to hip hop and pop yeah. culture in general. But like Eminem's super relevant. He's never not been relevant. And he's never like not made hits that have ended up as like the background music on trailers for Russell Crowe movies. Like he's yeah. <laughs> he's never had to do nine projects with Martha Stewart. <laughs> to remain relevant. I mean, I, I, you know, I love Snoop so much. Snoop is Snoop because I do Snoop too. Is, he's larger than the rap game. But I will say this: you will never see like Eminem hosting Tic Tac Doe. You know I mean? <laughs> That's true. It's not gonna happen. Like you might have people play Tic Tac Doe on a tattoo on his chest that also is like done with knives. Right. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Oh my god. Okay. So there's all of that so far. Mm -hmm. Then. Speaking of elections trying to be stolen and, and lies about that, newly elected Georgia GOP representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, the QAnon woman. Oh, yeah, this this woman, this Great. idiot. She said that this uh, that the elect our elections should be decertified, told this to CNN as she was traveling with Trump to to the state of Georgia. 
Um, yeah. Asked if she had any concerns about Trump's call. She said, quote, I think our secretary of state has failed, George. I believe our elections should be decertified. Asked if doing so would then impact her and other Georgia Republicans, all of whom were elected on the same ballot. She goes, uh, we were just talking about the president's race. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just the top part of the ballot. Just Not the one ballot Republican ballot. calling for this decertification is challenging the results of any of the ballots that they're also on. Yeah. In the same it, it, system with the same right. turnout and same voters that they're also on. They just want and, it to be this and, one. Did you ever do this with your brothers when you're in like a long car trip? You're like, we're in a race with everyone on this highway. Yes. <laughs> as soon as they pass us, they're no longer in the race. They're out of the race. They're out of the race. <laughs> right. Everyone on the highways. Well, the they race. cheated because we're only they going cheated. this fast. Yeah. <laughs> Decertify that car. I mean, that's that's a, this is a yeah. baby's. This is baby logic, like a three year old's logic. I mean, you you could break it so easily. Literally, you just have to say they're saying that they shredded ballots. Just the top part. Did they yep. stop the shredder? Yeah, they cut it off. Cut they, everyone. <laughs> Everyone brought scissors. Everyone brought you everybody. Know, they just Dave Cooley ate it. Snack. They Dave Cooley ate it. Yeah. <laughs> they just cut it off. <laughs> they did an impression of a saxophone and they just cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. I'll be honest. I hadn't thought of that. Like how they just shredded part. Of yeah. The cut it off. Cut off the top. They ruined the top. And then do they... I count these ballots that the top is kind of confetti style, kind of stringy? Yeah. Do we count mm -hmm. these? Yeah, you count those. Yeah, you count the bottom part, but then you don't count the top. Uh, it is, it is, it is it, Randy and I have talked about this so much that like losing is now, because of this dipshit, mm -hmm. losing is now not acceptable. That's not part of the equation. Like you're yeah. like, like Randy and I were waiting for the Miami Marlins to be like, not we the won Miami Marlins, the the no, 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 the Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay Rays. Sorry, Tampa, Tampa Bay Rays to be like, we won the World Series because if the coach would have left uh, <laughs> Blake Snell in, he probably would have continued pitching better. And there was a conspiracy that someone told the coach to take him out of the game. So we would have won game seven. We should have won. We would have won. I would have won game seven. I mean, so. Can I do this with the 03 Cubs while we're at it? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, do it. <laughs> right? No, no one gets to lose. No one has I mean, to Are we going to start seeing this in Miss America pageants? Like, that would be great if Trump goes back to doing like Miss Universe pageants oh, and like so someone who like loses is like, nope, nope, like just walks up and is like, nope, I won. No I won. Won. That, that uh, Steve Harvey incorrectly read comes back now yeah. i told you it was a fraud we mm -hmm. knew it was a fraud yeah unreal just, i mean to the point where mitch mcconnell literally said today finally finds his balls a little bit in the 11th hour says and i quote if this election were overturned by mere allegations from the losing side our democracy would enter a death spiral implied in that that i have enabled for four to six years Mm -hmm. I would say that the gullet underneath his chin that serves as the top part of his neck is a death spiral. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he got? He's just going to slowly swirl down like one of those coins for, for sick kids that makes it at least fancy for the experience when you part with your quarter and it goes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know that that's actually a really cool thing. He's no Mitch he'll McConnell's going to go back into his shell and then hopefully he'll choke on a straw. Oh. <laughs> True. Wild. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, I wonder what is going to happen to all these people. Like the dude who was sitting in Nancy Pelosi's seat, like in her chair, like they have a photo of this guy. Mm -hmm. like, like he should go to jail and get raped to sleep every night. For eight years. <laughs> I mean, it's a very I mean, hard way to fall asleep. It is. I mean, it is. You know, I mean, it's like so many federal offenses, right? Like breaking in and then also like isn't it also a federal offense to like carry any flag from another country like that's technically treason and there's what would you buy if you really had to guess what would you put 200 250 closed circuit cameras inside those buildings yeah. so there's evidence of every single person but here's the crazy thing trump in the next 14 days could pardon every single one of them. every single oh person God. Yeah, yeah, they have the they will drag it out they'll drag it out they won't they won't uh they won't They'll drag right. those people oh, out yeah. know who they are. It'll take months to figure out who they are. Yeah. Unless unless they uh 25th Amendment him, there's a little bit of talk. They always bring it up and it probably won't happen, but there's a little bit of talk with Pence on following him. Maybe they're planning, they're saying we can't survive even two more weeks of this guy. I, I don't know if you can. And Dan, you were saying you're your aunt, your aunt Connie, well, and just, your... yeah, people in my own family just were like, We can't do any more days, and they felt like that for a long time. But we were just talking about it today. Yeah. But my thing, I would genuinely, really, genuinely ask you guys though, 
it's such a troll level move for Mike Pen- Mike Pence and Mother to change his header on his Twitter. Like, yeah. do you really think that's an indication that he's that far done? That's very, it's very bold. It's a choice, it's, Dan. It's it is, a, and it's bizarre. Like, it's, it's a so bizarre. Yeah. It's a choice, though. Like, because. Oh, yeah. He has towed the line with this motherfucker every step of the way. Leading up and to it the wasn't end. until he came for him that he didn't give a shit. Yeah, correct. Right. And also, and also, it'll probably take longer to identify some of these people. Like, despite the amount of closed circuit cameras in the Capitol building, the ones in Pelosi's office probably all have that kind of fuzzy Barbara Walters filter. So it'll be a yeah. little hard to identify. Dream, some. dream, dream cam, dream cam, dream cam. Dream cam. I mean, right. the- Jay, you you your kid plays Fortnite, so you play it, you understand it. Mike Pence for these last four years is the guy in Fortnite who immediately gets dropped into the island and like hides in a bush. So he completely stays out of it the entire time. Mm-hmm. Where is he? We have no idea where he no is. Idea. He's probably having sex with some guy, and that's okay. Even but he's married. It doesn't matter. He doesn't read really, he's not connected with his own sexuality. Yeah, be proud, be happy. Whatever. Exactly. We support it. Just come out and be who you are, and we'll support yeah. you. And he and he is in there the entire time, does not fight. And then at the last point, someone's like, hey, there's someone in a bush. And then he starts shooting. <laughs> <laughs> what if he considered Trump this whole time his conversion therapy? He's like, I need a real macho guy. Yeah. <laughs> Talk it never art. works. It never works. The <laughs> bad boys work. never make you happy. No. <laughs> I learned no, that from sex. For too. a fling. For a fling. But, mm-hmm. you know. I for just... Yeah, it's, yeah Jason it's, was trying to say something. I don't know what it was. No, there. no, I, I, I'm on board with all this. And Randy, that was a good Fortnite analogy. And I agree. I do think like Pence has sort of, it's like, you know, it's bad when you now, like he can't even defend the guy. And I do think the fact that he did put Kamala Harris and Joe Biden on the seat is because he's saying to himself, somebody has to send a message to all of our followers that we have to concede. I was listening to, what John McCain said when he lost to Obama. Yeah, amazing. And his speech was Incredible. amazing. It was amazing. Remember how much we hated Sarah Palin and we thought she was an idiot and like mm-hmm. dangerous? Like his ability to say, look, I am sad. I am mad. It is okay to be upset. It is okay to be hurt, but we have to move forward as a country tomorrow. That's mm-hmm. how we do this. I'm going to give them all the help I can. I'm going to help them transition. Like, That's, to me, the most insane thing in the world that we've never needed transition more right now. We're like, we're like Bruce Jenner, like two and a half, like a year and a half ago. We've never (laughs) Never needed the transition to happen quicker and more smoothly. And with more force than, than now. And yet we are a hundred percent behind the, but isn't this, although ironically Pence has to grow some balls. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, they'll drop a bit. They'll drop eventually, but (laughs) he and Bieber, um, the idea though, that like, we'll get to Bieber in a minute. The idea that like you guys who go, who literally go balls out and don't ever concede are, are literally the ones who end up screwing themselves in the, in the future. Look at like Roger Clemens or Barry Bonds. Like, Mm -hmm. Those guys actually would have been great if they didn't touch anything or they admitted that they screwed up like Andy Pet, like they would have been fine, but they have gone to their, they will go to their grave denying that they did anything. And like, if you go, if you can't reverse course, like reversing course is not a sign of weakness is actually a sign of evolution. Strength, yeah. Exact truth. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that people get wrong. They think that admitting a mistake is weak. No, you have such a fragile ego. If one mistake makes you feel like you crumbled everything you've accomplished in life. But for a while there, Barry Bonds was going the opposite way. He seemed like he was trying to keep doing steroids till he could become his own Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade float. Like his <laughs> sure. head kept enlarging. It was I unreal. Know. I mean, yeah. it was him and then the cast of Starlight Express. Yeah, him, <laughs> I, he, was, he was up for the lead role on Megamind. He was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so speaking of mega mind, sort of, sort of tangentially connects. We'll get back to politics in a second. But we're going to bounce around. Uh, potentially murderous robots are dancing now. Yeah. Huffington Post is reported on if you saw this week, but Boston Dynamics, the Massachusetts company known for its cutting edge work in robotics, released footage of its famous robot collection, Boogieing to the Contours, 1962 R&B hit, Do You Love Me? Mm-hmm. And they danced in sync. There's one that's like a dog named Spot. There's one that's a, like a, like a moves boxes named Handle and a humanoid looking one named Atlas. They all dance precisely in sync to a three minute mm-hmm. routine. The technology developer said that he thought the dance made them less intimidating. The dance looked like a murder dance to me. Sure. <laughs> that's my thing. Like things are bad enough. Do we have to do 
like every episode of Black Mirror? Did, <laughs> Do we have to I hit mean, all the, the bases? Like the dog coming, the robot dog coming oh, after me. I, mean, I, I, I see that robot dog in my sleep coming after me. Mm-hmm. Like that is, you don't want a robot. You just don't want a robot dancing. I mean, again, you know, look, look how it worked out for Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Also, it's also very Fortnite because after they kill you, then they do a little they dance. Do a dance. Very they Fortnite. Do. Yeah. It, it's very they Shields and Garnell, too. Get your skins. Get your skins. <laughs> Why are they not making the first prototypes, at least, of these robots less enormous and muscular? Can't the first ones be little weak butler robots to get us okay with it? They're basically telling us it's happening. You can't stop it. And they're already murderers. Yeah, yeah. they're murderers. And they're it's like we're going to build a fleet of Rob Gronkowski's. <laughs> they, they dance a lot. Mm-hmm. They're scary. You feel like you could. They will definitely take you. And you can't cover you them do. over the middle. You can't cover them over the middle. There's you should call them word. Robot Gronkowski's. Robot, yeah. robot Gronks. Mm-hmm. Gronks. If you just call them Gronks. Gronks. That sounds Gronks. like a robot. Yeah. Gronk bot. That does. Gronk, Gronk 4. Bad. Gronk 2.0. Gronk Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Gronk about to murder. <laughs> uh, but we have that happening, which is exciting. Plus, also, this last week, uh, the Nashville bomber, it's believed now he believed in the lizard people. Yeah. That are humans were infected by lizards and now there's lizard people under the skins of humans and this was the big cause he wanted to basically just blow himself up on and some buildings right because he warned everybody else go away if you're not a lizard person from this truck that's what it was saying no it said get away 15 minutes it's going to explode but basically he probably didn't think that could be heard by the ears of a of a lizard who they don't speak i don't know recording and i love the song downtown by patelia clark i'm not joking i've loved that song my entire life it, it, I've been hearing it since I was a kid growing up. My family's always put on like the oldies station mm-hmm. when we up at the cabin yeah. in Wisconsin. Yep. And and, then, and when I found out that he had like co-opted that into his very explosive manifesto, I'm like, don't take this to leave Patelia Clark alone. Yeah. Has it changed the song for you at all? What? Um, yeah. I like it more now. <laughs> <laughs> because the neon lights really are very bright. They yeah. are. And you can always go downtown. Down. Except that one day. Yeah, don't go down that day. Don't go down that's that day. Was, that's why I wonder why he chose that song. Because right. because people in those instances, you like I watched the Heaven's Gate documentary. I've heard like, it. I've heard it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's and better than the vow, right? Better. Nah, I don't know. It's like I think it's, it. uh, it's weirder. It's it's definitely more bizarre and there's less like nefarious. It's like just a sick person, which kind yeah. of feels the same way about what this thing is. Less, there's- more or less volleyball. Yeah. A lot less volleyball, okay. but like a lot more Nikes. Uh, yeah. You got them Cortez's. Cortez's and more Nikes. The more Nikes. I mean, there were Nikes and then there was the black tunic shirts. Everybody's last name was Odie. And they like, wasn't even right. Like, it's not even like you'd be Dan Odie. You'd be Ben Odie. But That's like, it? It, I'd be Ran Odie, Jay Sodi, like yeah. It just I, the cult, I'm fascinated by cult stuff, and I just walk yeah. around and tell my daughters like, don't join a cult. They're like, they think it's a joke. I'm like, do not join a cult. You I'm know, like, there's like two cults operating in LA right now that are pretty big. Really? What are they? Yeah. What are those? One Land- is in Landmark? Venice. It's that '90s, 1990s child actor from Camp Nowhere. What? It's like something Circle or something like that. Like, uh-huh. yeah, he's got a cult going right now. Jesus. He was in like Boy Meets World and t- every other like 1990s TV no show. Way. Real good looking kid. How come these 90s actors can't revive their careers, but they can get <laughs> thousands to follow them to death. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like it, maybe it's maybe it's safer than them putting out another movie. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the other call? Hold on one second. Henry, please stop barking. We're talking about the end of the world. That's <laughs> Please quiet down. Henry's trying to get us into a cult. That's right. Well, I, That's I right. remember that guy. He was on Boy Breaks World. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The other one I I can't remember. They said, I, oh man, I don't. I, it's like operating in and around Hollywood, and they haven't gone like full. You know, they're still at that like we're just here to better your life phase. But it always takes the turn. Which is, have you guys have you listened to the Orgasm Cult yet? Have you yeah, listened oh, to that yeah. podcast oh, on BBC? Yeah. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. Oh, the orgasm bad. cult is here's the great thing, and it's not great actually. But like every cult, you know how it always ends up with like, hey, we're gonna change your life, hey, we're gonna fix your finances, hey, That's we're right. gonna reconnect you with what really matters, and then eventually 
come over here and let's have sex. Like it always right. gets around to like <laughs> touch my feet and then let's have sex. Yeah, yeah. The orgasm cult starts at sex. There's oh, no. Yeah. We're there's gonna no change the veil. world. We're gonna change the world. Damn, but it's not world. sex. It's you're, I know, you're, but it's sexual. Out the it, gate, it's sexual. There's no. They say is there's no not. like fake veil. I go, know what they on. say is it's not. They're like if you're if you're if you're Donald Duck in it in front of 80 people you've never met while someone rubs your clitoris. It's we, called stroking, Dan. Please okay. get the terminology I'm right. I'm sorry. I mean, I want to live in an ohm house. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're they're just going through that because they really can't wait till it gets to getting their finances in order. They really, that's true. Yeah, it's the other way around. You got to get right. through the sex stuff to get to the actual financial independence. It's, that's correct. <laughs> I never knew that multiple orgasms could be in the shape of a pyramid. <laughs> it's not <laughs> a scheme. It's an opportunity. Right. Yeah, but you it is fuck four friends, and they fuck four friends. Mm-hmm. Right. You get three orgasms to people. They give three more to three more people, and then you mm-hmm. start making money. <laughs> wow so so we're we're there we've got that going on we also uh had the kind of earth shattering news this week that these two social media influencers i don't know how to break this to you guys if you didn't hear it yourselves but they both named their babies baby and Uh-oh. they're feuding now they're feuding about this obviously they're feuding because one had a baby i think you gotta just go to the next you know how like when things are the same and you're alphabetizing and what's the net like i think the- maybe underscore two yeah, yeah baby one two three four mm-hmm. baby three two three eight 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 seven seven four five i would <laughs> or i just put the middle name spice and then get baby spice on board she's not mad honest question did either one of them do common spelling B A B. good question one of them did. One of them Ooh. did spelling baby, the, the newborn. But the other one, she's pissed because she's her friend and three years ago named her baby spelled B-A-Y-B-I. B-A-Y-B-I. B-I. By B. <laughs> By B. You should be able to punch that baby. Like everyone should be able to, just for that spelling alone. No, no, that, that baby should at 14, like be like, get to choose which strip club she's going to work for the next 10 years. Like she, like she likes it. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, look, this is your choice. We're going to take you to like 12 and you see what it's like, instead of a college tour, she's going to go on. Pick the one. We should put a pole in the crib of the, for this baby. I think that's right. She, she learned, she she learned the pole before she learned. How many people though, like when she's like getting her name called to like, I don't know, take some sort of standardized test and it's like, bye bye. <laughs> Maybe. Nobody puts Bay Bay in the corner, Dan. <laughs> Bay Bay, get off. Right. The Have you seen Bay the Black Bay. Friday deals at Bay Bay? <laughs> the Black Friday deals at Bay Bay are Honey, insane. Do we so many di- doorbusters. Do we need diapers? I'm gonna go to Bay Bay's or us and just yeah, <laughs> pick up a few. I was just listening to my favorite song. Ooh, Bay Bay, Bay Bay. There you go. I like Bay Bay and Beyond. <laughs> Bay Bay and Beyond is good. Maybe to be called Baby. I want it to be. A place where boats dock. That is also kind of feeling like they might be into both sides. Kind of a big mm-hmm. right. Where do you? No, it's it's you park your boat, but you're like, can I park it on this side? You could park it on both sides. Both sides. You feel like. by. Come on, round back, baby. Mike Pence is here, and the water's fine. That's Bay right. by curious. Bay by curious. Curious could be the middle name. Come Which on. also sounds like the book about Bay by. Bay right. by curious. <laughs> yeah, it's a little children's book about all the troubles that Bay by gets into. <laughs> 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 or what if it was by Curious George? That would be such a better book. You be careful. Curious That's George. being sold. I did a cartoon. I did a by Curious George cartoon for the old Glebe show for National Lampoon a million years ago. And it was if, if the monkey was having very strange interactions with the man in the yellow hat. I'm yeah. telling you, that is a t-shirt being sold in West Hollywood at Chichilla Ruse right now. <laughs> <laughs> by Curious George. And how do we know that the man in the yellow hat is a man? We don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also this week had the CEO of Whole Foods, yep. John Mackey, saying that we don't need health care. CNBC reported this. He says people just need to eat better and live healthier lives. He says, honestly, we talk about health care. The solution is not to need health care. It's about lifestyle, diet, the way we live. Of course, coming from the man who sells you the overpriced healthy food. How perfect for him. I mean, he's he's right that we have to change our diet. He's yes, one hundred. Isn't that also technically healthcare? Yeah, and but he's right no. that like people should be eating better, and you and and a lot of problems happen with the way people sure. eat. And mm-hmm. but he could actually make food affordable if he really wanted to be a part of that. Oh process. my god, R- Randy and I when we were in Austin, Texas, we were at like the mothership, like corporate center for Whole Foods. We walk into the to the place. A bird flies in lands 
looks around, and then flies out. He's like, I can't afford this shit. Are you <laughs> kidding? Are you joking? Even I can't even. Like, I can't even, like, pick. Uh, it's just, it's out of my price There's range. There's open nuts, like, that, and seeds right, at 10 feet away, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't even afford it. He was like, I'm just going to fly over to an HEB. <laughs> HEB, which is, you know, a little on the hook note. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Easy way to do it for real, but they wanted to make it a store in tech. Yeah. He could just make the staple food much yeah. cheaper and then have all the fancier things in the store be more expensive and still make I, yeah. it. Yeah. If you want to charge me $3.89 for a single vegan donut, I get it. Okay. Yeah. It's yep. it's specialty and it's also delicious. Yeah. Right. But, I deserve that. But the chicken breast, slow it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like jack up the prices on the vegan soap to pay to drive down the prices on the other thing on the basics, and then yeah. just have people. You know what I mean? You can do that. Yes, if you want to wash your body without a little bit of animal fat on there, you do you. But just pay seven dollars for that bar. It's gonna <laughs> keep the quinoa down. You know what I mean? So uh, Representative Cleaver, a a pastor who is also a representative in Congress, United Methodist pastor, was tapped to lead the opening prayer this week at the new session of Congress to open it up to swear in the new lawmakers. And uh, that was when Nancy Pelosi was reelected as House Speaker again by a thinner margin. He ended the prayer by saying, Amen and Ah Women. <laughs> oh and God. was roundly criticized for being far too woke. And this one I have to very much agree. That yeah. is. Horrendous. That sounds like a cartoon joke from a 1982 Playboy magazine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Dan. The, just a, can't you see that fucking dumb cartoon when you're staying at well, your no, aunt's uncles for the night and you finally found where the good stuff is? And you see that dumb cartoon stuff with no pants on, and he's and there's like a woman lying on the bed, and then two women behind him. He's like in a orgy, yeah. and he's got a cross. He's got some rosary beads, and the woman's laying down, and he this is like <laughs> she blessing her, and he says amen, and then he kind of looks back at the two right. women. And women. <laughs> mm -hmm. All women. All women. All women. Oh, God. That is so, wait, he, but he thought he was, was he like giving people the razz, like no. giving people the business? He thought that he was like, I'm, I'm being woke. Yeah, he, he was trying to be oh. inclusive. He, oh, he was so trying strange. to be more inclusive and was attacked because amen has nothing to do with men. It's the Latin word for so be it. It's nothing to do with men. And, so but, be it. This is the problem is that absolutely the, the left is too trying to be too woke and is too sensitive. But look at the difference in the in the significant the heaviness of the Yeah, I mean who cares? Violence. It's it can be criticized. You're worried about the wrong thing. You're yeah. you're taking too much time worrying about this stuff. It's 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 like pardon the word, trumped up, you know, anger at something that doesn't need to be there. And by the way, Trump like should be a word for dangerous. It's yeah. you know what I mean? It's trumped up. It means it's dangerous. Like wild moronic danger. Like that's so nuts in there. Like stay away. There's yeah, that, guy, that guy's there. trumping out. You don't want to be near that. That guy's that's totally true. trumping out He's acting like a baby. He's not making any sense. He's claiming He's wild yelled over himself. He's starting to cry and do cocaine at the same time. He's trumping mm -hmm. out. Dude. Trumping out. Dude, just let him <laughs> just take away his wallet <laughs> so he can't do any damage. And keys. Yeah. And, and cell phone. So two at least more good bits of news this week. Well, at least well two good bits of news. This Congress at least was the most diverse ever in U.S. history. The fifth in a row to break that record. More women, more people of color, and more openly LGBTQ members. Although probably if you included closeted Republican yeah. members, that would probably have been a very high mark for decades. Mm -hmm. But this is progress. And then just certified hours ago as well, they had to break into the coup attempt underway to yeah. say, Ossoff is now formally won, and the Democrats have taken, regained control of the Senate, although, of course, not literally because there's still a coup in there and people are hanging off the rafters, but yeah. technically. <clears throat> it's amazing. It's unbelievable. And the way it went down is just so, it's Shakespearean, how Trump fuck this thing for himself so badly by mm -hmm. diverting people's attention by making it all about him and his own personal grievances he did not care at all he doesn't care about the republican party no, he did the best thing possible he made his own people question the validity of their yes. vote yeah he repressed his own votes it was magic yeah it is literally like you couldn't have drawn like 
Democrats were probably sitting around going like Stacey Abrams was like, look, I've done all I can do since 2013. I've been running a ground game on this bitch and I have done everything I can. We're probably going to lose. Why? Because Democrats have lost seven out of eight reelection or, or, you know, runoff since the 80s in Georgia. The only never had a black senator. They've never had a black senator. The only time they Jewish won, senator. The only Jewish time senator. they won a runoff, the guy then three months later changed parties and became Republican. <laughs> you are not going to do it. It is not going to happen, especially after we had elected a Democratic president. There's like there's nothing we can do. The, she probably sat around and jokingly said to all the people in the De Georgia Democratic National Party, you know, that group there, the only thing we can hope for is that Trump comes down here and fucks everything up. And he yeah. did. Right. He did. Because right. he right. Trump, all Trump had to do, basically, it's like that old Philadelphia or New York Giants play or the Eagles play. All you had to do is take a knee, and then he fumbles the snap. And these guys, Steve Pizarchik, Steve Pizarchik, yeah. and Harold, and and uh, Herm Edwards picked it up and ran. That's all he had to do was just fall down. Mm -hmm. Well, taking a knee has been a very charged thing for his administration in many ways. From Kaepernick, <laughs> many. From Kaepernick to Floyd, he really has a real problem with people taking knees. But how crazy is it that that Colin Kaepernick is more of a patriot than anyone who stormed the Capitol today? Yeah, big time. Big time. Big he time. was even before that, but that's the exact thing. It's protesting for people's rights. The right loses their mind and protesting against people's rights. Like, take away the free and fair election. Yes, I love it. Let's do it. But yeah. the other way we did it, the other way that we won Georgia was not just Stacey Abrams organizing. It was a billion dollars spent. It was more money on TV ads than the Trump campaign spent on TV ads for president nationally. It was four. $43 million spent officially and then another half billion spent by the affiliated unofficial groups supporting it. And that's how they pushed it over the edge. But I think it's a little more specific than that. And Dan, Jay, you can agree or disagree. But I think because the Democrats way outraised the Republicans in the uh, Jamie Harrison race against Lindsey Graham, they way yeah. outraised yeah. him in McGrath. They way outraised him. So like, we kicked ass in terms of out raising money against the Death Star shitty Mitch McConnell's and Lindsey Graham. We crushed them. But I think what happened here is that the message with the Democrats was extraordinary cohesive and it was very unified. This is what's going on. And it's like these guys don't want to they don't want to vote for your two thousand uh, dollar. Right. They don't want you to have two thousand dollars. That's a simple thing for regular people to understand. They yeah. don't want you to have two thousand dollars. They're going to vote against it. They think the election isn't real and there it's more chaos like they were able to get the message whereas leffler's like the election yeah we gotta stop the steal and he should have won but i won and so my part of the ballot is that it's what you were saying before and so like they didn't have a clear message and yeah. like and brian and kemp the guy who supported me and appointed me he's a jerk because trump says he's a jerk but i like him because he appointed me like no one could figure out what their message was but also she was never elected Right? right. So so you don't have like a seven term, like these are the most pick offable. I don't guys. know. Purdue Purdue was a he he was six in his year. sixth year. He was in his sixth year. And so now Ossoff, this is a six year term. Now Warnock has to get reelected in twenty two, but yeah. Ossoff is there for six more years. It's yes. great. And, and also, it, it's one of the few times when the Democrats have figured out how to tighten their messaging and actually make it on point and make it about kitchen table issues and economic things and the things that matter and not always being so granular and so esoteric in a lot of the things they push for. We're going to lead to better and human rights. We're going to improve your life this way and say the environment. It's like, no, more money in your pocket. This person also profited off the pandemic. It was like I feel like the Democrats have to hire the Lincoln Project and be like, do all yeah. of our messaging. We'll pay you so much money, and you can take all the money we pay you and give it back to the Republican Party. We don't give a shit. Just do all of our messaging. They're like, don't say we're gonna change the environment. Say we're gonna open up a plant where there used to be a car plant in Flint, and it's gonna make a uh, wind, you know, wind machines. And we're don't gonna do that. We're going to open a metal plant in Flint. You guys want in? You want a job? Yeah. Does everyone in Flint want a goddamn job? You guys want benefits? You want a job? Guess who opened up a plant? Democrats. Guess who closed that plant? Republicans. End of story. Next yeah. town. Who gives yeah. a shit what they're making? No one cares what they're making. You think someone walks around, walks into a plant every single day and they're making one nut in the corner of a thing and they're like, geez, I can't wait to see the thing I'm making. No, they're saying, I hope I don't get hurt. 
I hope yeah. I hold on to this job. I hope I keep getting the money I get and I live for the weekend. That's the end of the story. So no, no one cares if the metal panel they're go, they're making is going to go on someone's trunk or if it's going to go on the thing. Solar on, the on a solar panel. Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares. I, I surveyed my crowds and that's exactly what they tell me. Around the world, in Canada and the U.S., when I was running for office, I would take a little chunk of my act and ask questions of the audience and use it as a chance to have a little town hall. And I would say to them, would you, and in oil towns, in the middle of oil towns in Canada, I was like, would you be, be willing to retrain and have a green job? And they're like, first, they're like, no, we need these jobs. And I'm like, okay, I understand you need them. If we right. could for sure replace the job and retrain you simply for that new skill and the job wouldn't be dangerous because you're not in a mine, you're not in oil, yeah. you're not breathing this stuff and it'll pay the same or better, then would you? And instantly everybody's like, yeah, then yeah. we're yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we'll, and we'll give you childcare and we'll make sure that your uh, that your kids can go to college. And you know what? You don't have to pay for healthcare because everyone's going to get it. Like the, the fact that people fight this stuff is insane okay. to me. It is insane. It is, it is much like, you know, it is, it is a lot like when your kids, when you ask your kids to eat vegetables and they like vegetables, but it's like, it's hard for them to see. But like you say, look, you eat candy all the time. Your teeth are going to rot. You eat vegetables all the time. You're going to be healthier. You're going to be stronger. You know, I wish you could stay up till 1am every night. You can't, you got to go to bed at 10, 11. Mm -hmm. And like, and and you, and Trump came along and told all these people, no, stay up till one in the morning, dude. I'm I'm the guy who lets you stay up till one in the morning. The other guys want to make you go to bed at ten or eleven. Well, you know what? You ruined it. Yeah, and you're, you're gonna make it should sense. have been a van. It should have been literally a white van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 the country and handy out to the whole country. That's he it. did. And he got the country in there, and now the country's been held hostage for four months, and now we had to you do something to break them out. Four years. Yeah. And so, but because of money's outsized influence in our politics, and I'm sure you guys get the texts and the emails that are so overly dramatic. One day it's, oh my God, no one is donating. And the next day it's, we're, we're leading. We have a chance to win. All the money's pouring in. The next day, are you there, Ben? The next yeah. day, do you care about America? The next day, like Nancy Pelosi texts you, Ben, I need you. Like she's trying to fuck. I don't know what's yeah, happening. No. We're going to kill a goose if you don't respond to this. There's a goose <laughs> yes. on the other end of this email. We can play. Let's just round robin different email subject lines coming from political fundraisers. They even superimposed me onto like a like a Sarah McLaughlin ad where I was one of the dogs and they were like, do you not care about yourself, Daniel? Yeah, it was so they weird. Swap. I mean, I appreciated the effort, but I was like, I they swap. You're yeah. like, oh, a really good picture. That's a really good picture of me on that Rottweiler. <laughs> a really good picture of me. Are you uh, trying to kill my grandmother, Ben? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have like catastrophe in Georgia. Right. Daniel, like, I know what you did last summer. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't like being ignored, Ben. We have pictures. <laughs> we have pictures of you. That's the line. And then you're like, "What? Not giving money, not right. donating." <laughs> like, what, what are you talking about? What are you wearing? The flag, by chance? Yeah. <laughs> you up? Yeah. Uh, you you up for some fundraising? And then yeah. it's like, ah, okay. Uh, okay. Fun right. dot, dot raising. <laughs> 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 oh my God. So um, this brings us, of course, to another huge story from the week. This is Justin Bieber for a music video, had his tattoos removed. Do you think it looks better? Did you see the photo of him without that? I, I saw the process of it when they were doing it. I mean, it, this is what they have to do like for every Ben Affleck and Angelina Jolie movie. They have to do it digital or they have to spend six hours in, in hair and makeup to get these all removed. Yeah. I mean, he Did just they, looked more like a kid. Did they remove all of them or did they just put makeup? They covered on? them all up. Yeah, they just covered them all up with makeup. Yeah. Was, I thought they looked great. Yeah, yeah videos, he does look great. The videos are like a Rocky thing where he's trained to fight somebody or something like that. Oh, I haven't seen the video. Is that what's happening in it? Yeah, he gets trained to fight Logan Paul in a suicide Shut course. Up. All right. oh, <laughs> okay. There you go. There's the Jason I made it up. Right. Right. No, no, no. But it is, it is like, a, uh, like a mini movie, like a boxing. I didn't see it, but. Um, do you guys do this? Tattoos? No tattoos. I don't have any yet. Dan, what are you going to get? I have a couple I want to get. I want to get, you know how people do the... Um, Me and Jason on each turn. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. 
but the glasses are a sticker so I can mess with people. Uh, <laughs> Who's Randy? Who's Jay? <laughs> right. Um, you know how people do like just that simple line outline of their state, like John Gabris has a very famous one. He's yes. always showing up. Yes. Uh, I always want to do one that is the entirety of Illinois and Wisconsin in one shape with no border between it. And then Ooh. I would do like a star on Chicago, my hometown of Rochelle, and then uh up at where the cabin is in Wisconsin. It's a good idea. So, like yeah, that. just like a very and and no no border between just one entire shape. So it's right that's, that's, borders. That's beautiful. Yeah, I used to be really anti, but um, you know, I think just a really tasteful Tweety Bird on my lower back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should get a hot clip. <laughs> in face, on my face. Have you, can you see it? That's a good idea, Jason. You, yeah, you want it is. Get a face on a face. Interesting. On top of the glasses. Yeah, on top of the glasses. <laughs> yeah, I was a big fan of, uh, of face of the movie Face Off. Yes, yeah, so oh, I went ahead and you know, yeah. <laughs> really, I don't know how you walk around with that ridiculous chin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a chin on your Ooh, chin. Yeah. <laughs> Let's um, get out of here, Vince Neil. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good, man. Thanks. That's pretty damn solid. So we're we're competing Kenny for Kenny Stevenson. He's doing Kenny competing. Stevenson. He's doing our friend Kenny Stevenson, who does it perfectly. And I apologize, Kenny. You are no, the you crushed it. Well, I feel like impressions. Once you get it in your voice, it's the, the mm -hmm. skill of the voice. It's not you know, yeah. yeah, whichever way you get there. But we're talking already about brothers and in similar faces. So I'd like to discuss our last story here. Prince William and Prince Harry have started to repair their fractured bond. They had a real bad falling out, ugly, incredibly intense. An insider says when, you know, uh, whichever one left with Megan and did the moved here and all that bullshit, they're finally figuring it out. And so thoughts on the Royal family on the feud and have you two ever had a feud, Randy and Jason? So we fought, uh, definitely, but never a feud. Like we got mad at, we'd get mad at each other. Like when we're, you know, in New York doing a bunch of gigs that we famously got so mad at each other because one night we were like, at the Gotham, then going up to stand up New York, then across town to, you know, a uh, comic strip, then back down for the late night show at Gotham. And we go to the comic strip and we walk in there and the energy is just weird, horrible, go, horrible, go up on stage and just, and we had like two great sets and then walked over there and just tank city the way you just do. It happens mm -hmm. part of it. It's happened to us. It's like, we just tanked it and we get into a cab to a take a house to packed room. Ooh. So annoying. And we then go, get into the cab to go down and we just start fighting with each other. Cause I was like, you know, like it even mattered. Like just the Jay's half of the room was just like the bad silent half. So I kind of blamed it on him. Like it even mattered. It didn't even matter. But I was like, all right, handle your business. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and we started to get into a fist fight so much so that like the cab driver pulled over and was like, you got to get out. He would cab driver like, like working like to bring working to bring family the the night. Yeah. yeah. New York cabbies let anything happen back I know, there. man. Our our Jordan Rubin, our, our good buddy who had like our favorite joke about a New York City cab ever was like uh yeah. he was in a New York City cab and he's like uh hey uh, can you just let me out right up here on the left in that accident that you're in? <laughs> 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 but when you were kicked out of the cab, did while while fighting each other, did part of you think free cab ride? Yeah, well, yeah, he didn't ask for any money. He like literally like before the door was shut, like, like get out, get out. And he was right. We were just so stupid and young and dumb, and it just was like we didn't realize you got to just let it go, and it's all part of the night. But we've never feuded. I mean, I heard I read the story about the Royals, and I was like, they're still a thing. The Royals? <laughs> I didn't even realize that. <laughs> well, they're living like in Santa Barbara, basically. But yeah, yeah. there's something. I believe in the Kansas City Royals more than I believe in the <laughs> and they're having and they are just down. Like yeah. there's really like when COVID hits at this point, it's like who cares about? But I do think it's interesting because we have our own version of the Royals, and it's the Kardashians. Like that's who American Royals are. You hear that she and Kanye are getting divorced. She and yeah. Kanye are getting divorced. What do you think about this? Did you see it coming? I mean, I'm sure she broke into his phone. The code was one two three four. Once you start looking at what he's been doing, it's like. <laughs> Or publicly looking at what he's been doing. Yeah. I mean, Kim Kardashian is like, she is so bad. But the weird thing is, is she's been trying to do a lot of like really good socially it's conscious I things. She, yeah. I bet she has too, but she is such a, like, let's go back to why she's famous because I she know, made sex totally. tape for AJ. That's it. But I'm and, also, look, I got my career by wearing a wig and talking like somebody else. Yeah, damn it. It's not the same. Hold on. And I got peed on. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> no, no, no. 
I, I'm just saying that like, you know, it got so bad that when, when she was dating or was she dating or married to Chris Humphreys? Who's married? I think, I think didn't they get married for like 17 days or something. Yeah. Like that? Or 70 it, days or something. He, yeah. he was in a basket. I, we were watching, I was watching the Nets play someone else and he was on the Nets. And every time he touched the ball, people booed. I'm like, Oh my God, no one knew who Chris Humphreys was. Now they're booed at like scrub time and he's getting booed every time he, you know, he touches the ball. Gotta yeah. I mean, we, we, we had an old joke in our act about, uh, <laughs> Kardashians that like Kim Kardashian sued Old Navy because there was a girl in the commercial that kind of looked like her. And I saw her and she kind of looked like her, but we're like, <clears throat> do you not understand what Old Navy does? They knock off cheap shit. They were just doing what they do. I mean, it's like you can't get mad at that. Right. And Mark also Jacobs doesn't <laughs> sue H and M. And you tagged our joke better than me. The really messed up part of that suit was when she lost and then had that girl killed. That was not nice. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, and then buried with 80, 80 pairs of socks for two dollars. That was really weird. <laughs> Had her ship to Chris Humphrey's house. I mean, no, it is. Like Kanye, <laughs> but Kanye is just mentally ill, and one hundred percent truth. Yes, nobody yeah. is stopping him. Like he needs to go on deep meds and probably not ever be in front of people again. And that's probably in like a real life sense. That's probably what it came down to for them. At least like that. At a certain point, like it seemed like she released some statement of, uh, a month or two ago where she like seemed to very like take it seriously. Like she's dealing with someone who has serious mental health issues yeah, and it's she not to be made light of it. And at a certain point, you also have to like self preserve. And also, if you have children involved, you got to preserve for them too. And so it feels like they probably reached the point where he has enough people enabling him and, and she expended as much as she could. Hopefully I, I'm obviously hopeful in these scenarios that she expended as much as she could for him. And at a certain point it's like, okay, I still have to do me and these people. And if I can't help you, I can't do that at the sacrifice of these kids or myself. And I, that's probably in real life, like what it's come down to. And it's like, if, 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 if I'm spending all my time helping Kanye, who's going to eat this big salad for this next scene? Of <laughs> <There> <laughs> <you go. laughs> it, it ain't going to eat itself. It does not. <laughs> and he's not home to even toss it for her. There's a lot of issues. No, he'll he'll toss toss jail. If he goes to jail, he'll be tossing a lot of salads. That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> He's going to make that bitch famous in every cell in the cell block. <laughs> yep. So, uh, listen, we only have a little bit of time left. There's a lot I want to still get through. So let me just try to speed through some things. Um, sure. Something I'm just always very curious about. Well, first of all, Daniel, can you tell me what that was? You started your career with a wig on and getting peed on? Oh, no. I, just, I started out at UCB and then the Scholars yeah. and I started working together and I started doing those Mark Wahlberg voicemails on there and – that led to like a lot more character work and uh, being a, I don't know what you call it, a team member at UCB and, and then eventually led into to stand, stand up. up and still, you know, doing characters and, and in a much more organic way, they weave themselves into my album. Thanks Diane and stuff like that. So yeah, I just, for a while I was the guy with the wig and the duffel bag full of props, me and James Adomi and just showing up trying to goof around with people. Crushing so, it. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't have plans of being a stand up and then you just kind of fell into it? Yeah, I always loved doing it. Like I, it was always something I loved, but it, it I started a little bit later uh than we most people. We talked about it on the show. Dan, yeah, you, yeah. Dan would come in on the podcast and he, you know, Jay and I have worked with and been around guys like Adam Carolla who, you know, say what you will about his politics. He, he knows how to make a take. He is a guy who like we'll just be riffing with him and whether or not he's come up with it ahead of time. We've been on a show with him and he will spill out or spit Spade out. Is like this. Spade, is, Spade like is, this. is like this too. David yeah, Spade, Spade is, is like this too. Spade is amazing. Spade's amazing like this where you're talking to him and he will just in conversation put out a fully formed comedy bit. You're like, I can't believe we'd say, David, have you ever done that on stage? And he's like, no, I didn't. We're like, that is a bit, man. What you're talking about, you you just fully formed it. Get it up, put it out. Dan was doing that on the podcast a lot. He'd say, you know, this is my idea about this. And the other, and we we're like, Dan, you, you have to do stand-up. We'd say it on the podcast publicly so that like all the fans would listen to it and be like, yeah, man, get out there and do stand-up. And to his credit, he no, we went to Madison, Wisconsin. We went to Madison. I mean, we were in Madison, Wisconsin, which is close to where Dan has family and, and his cabin and whatnot. And it, and it felt comfortable for him a little bit. And we said, you know, we're fortunately at the level where we can bring our feature. And we're like, Dan, 
you're going to have 25 minutes every night in front of packed houses. We sold out every show. And we were like, Dan, you're going to have a real chance to jump in the fire and do sets. And he got on stage and did full sets for the first, like he had done stand up around, but like this was his first featuring thing. And he killed it to the point where the club loved him. And he started at like, uh, I will say like, and this is just because he's gotten so much better since then. He started at like a B plus out of the gates. Nice. Like, Thanks, buddy. Like, yeah, it was it was it was great, and it was just a it was just a lot of fun. My whole thing was is that when I first started into comedy, I knew I wanted to go through like the UCB route and stuff like that. But like my, I started out interning at UCB on Tuesday nights, which was Doug loves movies, and then uh, comedy great. death ray, uh, then now comedy bang bang, and right. so I'm wanting to start doing stand-up while watching arguably the best stand-up show in the country every Tuesday night. And when you're watching, you know, the Sklars would be there and 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 obviously Scott Aukerman and Patton and Sarah Silverman and Besser and like all these people go up and do these great and Harris. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But like you're watching that and you're you're like, well, I can't I'm not why would I can't do that? You you're know what I mean? Subconsciously. Yeah, because I had also already like missed the part where you go off and suck privately without anyone else watching you so i was like well that doesn't happen as much as people say casting couch wise but <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Does, you have to yeah. you have to go through many iterations dan just like is a very perceptive person who we've watched over the past like four or five years just really st take the what he needs to do and 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 get better at and then sort of employ that into the writing of the next bit of material. I've never seen a person have something happen to him and then be able to immediately like that night, have it be a bit. It's amazing. Well, like I think it comes to the credit from working with you guys. Like, like I had all those years of like finding a story, breaking down what's funny about it and then expounding on why I find that funny or what in my life relates right. to why I feel this way. And we were doing that on Sklarwell County before dumb people town. Like we were doing that minimum four stories a week for years and years so, so i want to know in a second how dumb people town came to be but if we're talking about writing stand-up i'm always so curious to jason and randy how do you guys write do you have to agree on every premise do you have to agree on every joke do you write it out on a computer or paper do you rehearse a lot because you say things at the same time a lot please explain that process so we, the way we come up with material is a lot like a band. I, I don't know if you saw the, I, we saw this, both of us saw this moment in the Peter Bogdanovich, Tom Petty documentary, and it resonated with the way we create material. So Petty's on the road for Damn the Torpedoes, and they're just in the hotel, and he just starts playing the beginning of The Waiting. All he has is and he plays it over and over and over again. Finally, the band is like, you got to shut the fuck up or write a song. Just do it. But he walked in and was like playing that riff and he had that riff and he's like, he brought it to them because that riff was in his brain. And then from that came the song, which was, you know, the biggest hit on his next album. For us, it's like, okay, this happened to me. This weird thing. Jay gave his son a phone. Or my, or my gave my son, he wanted Instagram for his 12th birthday. And I was like, immediately regretted it as soon as I gave it to him. I'm uh -huh. like, God, man, why did I do that? That was so stupid. And so Randy's kids are a little older. And so I'm like, how do I, I can't take it back. Like once the thing is out of the thing, the can, you can't, cat's out of the bag, you can't do it. So I'm like, I, I can't do that but i can ruin ruin instagram with parenting and so <laughs> that's the premise you make, you make him smoke all the cigarettes right, right. But, but worse like randy and i are like what would be so then i tell that to randy and then it becomes like an improv back and forth with like what are the most parenty things i could say about instagram so i'll come in and be like hey your uncle david just posted a photo of that he's very why aren't you following him you got and let you gotta like it, and i would like to see a comment and it has to be more than three sentences and it can't be a mumble like nice job and look at what your other cousin wrote about his uh, so you know your cousin georgia comment i don't like this song on this thing and randy and i start going back and forth and the beginnings of a bit come and then so that's how the bit starts on us going back and forth. And if it's making us laugh and we're loving it, then we know there's something in it. Then we get it on stage. We start getting on stage, start performing it for a while. So you don't audio record it first or write it down first. You go right on stage and riff it on stage. We never write. We never write anything down. We're just talking. 
talk it. And because we have two mental recorders here that remember. And so we get it on stage and it, if it starts to do well and we feel the laugh points, then we're like, okay, that's good. We keep doing it, keep doing it. And then we usually are out on the road with somebody, be it Dan or someone else. And we're like, how can we, we need. Well, not with Dan anymore. <laughs> Dan's out, hey, of the road. We'll be at a festival doing the pod. Right. That's right. That's true. We'll be somewhere and we'll be like, okay, this bit is great, but it's about two minutes long and it should be four minutes long. We need two more examples and then we need a way to wrap it up or we need to take it in a different direction or we need to do something else. We need to turn this into an act out. How can we like, I mean, that's, that's true. We love, and we love collaborating with people we bring out on the road with us. Feature acts, Amy Miller, Aaron Urist, who's a great comedian from Denver, Nate Fridson, who's a great comedian in New York. These are all people, uh, you know, Nate Abshire, people we love. So like, we'll sit down and look at their sets and pitch them jokes for their thing. That's like our favorite thing in the world to do. And then we'll have them look, Aaron Urist helped us on the end of a bit, come up with the third tat, the third example in this thing and the way he got us to the place that it was finished this bit that it was to, like in a year and a half we didn't have the end of the bit and he helped us finish we sat down and we're like let's figure this out and he kind of got us there and this is our feature act it was it was just so cool we yeah. open ourselves up to that collaboration do you ever one of you like riff a punchline one time and then like not remember whose it was or wish you could do it or negotiate who gets to say something sure. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, whose story is this? You know, Jay's like, well, this is a story with my thing. And then we're, then I say, where do I fit in in this story? And then what's the larger thing that we're trying to say with this story? Like, what are we trying? What is the larger truth about, you know, sex robots now for that they're having for the elderly? Great idea on paper. Our mom's old. We want her to have a companion. But have you ever tried to like help your mom set up her email? <laughs> it's like the worst thing in the world. You're on face sitting. No, you go down, you got to scroll down. I mean, like, you know, he might have the great punchline there. It doesn't matter how it goes out. It's just us. Then it becomes the two of us trying to tell this fictitious person that they're doing it wrong. And so like, you know, we try to build the bits in such a way that it works like that. I love it. I love that. So then how did you guys decide to bring in a third to your relationship that sounds weird but how did you decide how did dumb people town come about because for those who don't know it you have to subscribe to dumb people town podcast it's amazing it's one of the most like simple and pure and hilarious formats for a podcast i've ever heard i've so loved getting to have you guys you're do awesome. it. Where it you're awesome on it you were you did it you were great on it Indeed. thank you it was the hardest thing i ever did because it was like in the height of the pandemic and i had to do it on my phone and i had the work connection and i couldn't hear you guys and i was like trying i wanted to be so funny i was like you're great here and risk. nobody knew that nobody, nobody knew, knew that uh, i was actually interning at earwolf and the sclars were looking for somebody to help them find sports stories for their sports podcast sclarbo country and then also pitch jokes and we met at like yahoo studios coming up on eight years ago no nine years ago nine and uh and they were just like hey so we're just doing all this shit so as much as you want to be around for it and i that was literally starting at zero at that point in my life starting over so i didn't even have a car and so i would just ride with them to wherever they were going and then they had the opportunity to add a second episode every week of their show and they said well we kind of want to do the same thing we want to do it different and i said well when i'm looking for sports stories i find all these just crazy dumb stories that have nothing to do with sports and they're super funny and sometimes we would even joke around about them before we would get to work and start writing down the sports stories and so they said well what if we just do these and i said yeah i'll bring in three stories all you guys you're already working on this entire other big podcast i'll break down the three stories you guys find one of your friends to come in and be the guest and we'll just do the part that happens in every writer's room where people talk about funny shit they saw before they get to work that's right. and that's the podcast and so that lived for a while at a bit of a different iteration on earwolf and then it went over to starburns and kind of was really reinvented and revamped and but also but kept everything that was great to it all the poles that kept the tent up and uh, it became dumb people town and it's just this like you said it's like four funny people at a minimum three insane fucking stories and forget about all the shit in your life just well, have the, and for an hour. yeah it's it's funny because Patton described it as like it's the thing i need when i just don't have had it up to here with politics and everything else i just need it because it's like it's life it's funny 
it it gets to the heart. It doesn't skirt around life. Okay. Yeah, we tend to not really even make fun of people. We say why. We don't say like, look at this idiot. Now, granted, most of them are idiots, and I'm sure we've said that many times. This idiot. <laughs> but we're more saying like, why did this? These two got in a fight in a driveway at 7:15 a.m. on a Sunday. But let's talk <laughs> about the fight that really started on Friday right. night. Right. That's How right. did they get there in their lives? That's yeah. Right. Well, and yeah. and what I'll say, what I love, and why why it works, the three of us is that Dan comes to it with such different energy, but it all works because we love each other. But his energy is really different from ours. Like Jay and I have an energy between the two of us, and just from the way we grew up as Jews in St. Louis and living in New York and this and that, you know. So we have like the Midwestern roots, and so does Dan. So we really connect on that level, mm -hmm. on a deep, deep level. But Dan's a different person than us, and he approaches life differently. And he will, in a situation, look at it from his perspective, and it's really different than ours. And so we're also a decade older than Dan. Dan and oh, Jay, well, good echo from Jason's like There's so many different things we, we all bring to the table. Robot right there. Yeah, yeah, that's like robot. Robot. No, you're yeah, right. There is so many different robot. things. But I think I'm like saying we're a decade. Older, we're older than Dan, and we also have kids, so we all bring something different to the yeah. table. And I, but I think to, one of the biggest through lines is just as people, the three of us, we're very inclusive versus exclusive. Yeah. So we're never like Ben, you know, when you come in or anybody comes in, the water's always warm and nobody's peed in it. Like it's just, right. <laughs> it's like it's very, we're very a more the merrier type people, which I think also just breeds itself into the actual vibe, which is you know the vibe is completely different from the from the story. You know? It's magical. And let me just speak to that for a second because nobody believes you saying it because it's your own podcast. But let me <laughs> say that yeah. it really is one of the funniest, most infectious laughter shows I've seen. And not only are you three hilarious together, but you bring in powerhouse guests. Like just the live ones you've done at Nowhere have been John Hamm and you've had uh, 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 Jim and Mike Birbiglia. And you're about to have Zach Galifianakis on January 16th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get tickets to be part of the live audience virtually from your home at NowhereComedyClub.com. You guys have up to, I think you sell, like, what, what is it, 700 seats, right? I mean, we do pretty well, and we have a nice base of the people that then fluctuates based on who's there. I mean, we had the guys from the Dollar Podcast last time for a holiday one, and it was just outrageous and good, and they were amazing. And Mac Lethal was on that show. Yep. So, you know, I think it it fluctuates, but it, it tends to be around 500 to 700, and then there are group tickets and couples tickets. So it's like anywhere between 500 and 1,000 people show up at this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just – it's good it vibe. Really it's a good vibe. Again, we've done a lot of things in our lives. Jay and I, you know, have been in this business for a long, long time and Dan too. But like Jay and I have done every possible iteration of movies and TV and film and, and stand up and this and that, everything. The, the podcast, I've never had anything where we don't know what it's going to be walking into that room. We just don't. Dan has the stories. He goes through them. But I can tell you, but we're confident it's going to be hilarious. There are going to be so many laugh moments. And it's to me, that's just the, just the trust in each other that it's going to be hilarious. No matter what's going to happen, just makes you so excited to do it. I love it. And so please get tickets, but also subscribe to the podcast. It's a blast. Even when you don't see it live, just listening to it. It's so much fun. And uh, we went a little bit long. So let me just jump right now. We're going to skip Twitter answers about an alternate reality. I will do that in a minute when you guys bounce because I know you have to go, but I would love to jump for a moment to our thunder round because I have something very special planned for that. So okay. it is time for the thunder round because you can't hear lightning. And so, <laughs> yeah. so uh, we have three stories for you here. The last two are Florida man stories from my birthday. From right, my right. Birth this is what the core of the podcast is. It's basically Florida man does crazy shit. But the first one, not Florida man. This is Denmark man. Denmark oh launched a children's TV show about a man with a giant penis, The Guardian reported <laughs> yeah. just a few weeks ago. John Dillerman has an extraordinary penis. So mm -hmm. extraordinary, it can perform rescue operations, etch murals, hoist a flag, and even steal ice cream from children. This Well, that's not ice cream. That's a different type of cream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's also red and white striped. It's kind of a Waldo-esque. Hey. Uh, we said this on our podcast. Uh, that's reminiscent of a giant candy cane. 
maybe the worst candy ever offered to children. I and want also the worst cane I, ever offered to children. <laughs> I want a candy, but I want it to taste like toothpaste, and I want it to have a giant hook in it, but like cuts my mouth, and I want it to be so big that I can never finish it. Well, I love that this was a kids' show. They wanted it to be a mini series, but they really, really hoped that it became like a full on. They series. extended it. They like, extended it. Extended. I'm all for acceptance, but at some point, you've gone. The body's been too positive. We don't need to go that positive with the body. Some people are actually the makers of the show and defenders of it are claiming it's actually good because it depicts a man who's impulsive and not always in control like kids. But at the end, he makes it right, takes responsibility for his actions. Like like a woman on the show tells him he should keep his penis in his pants and he listens, making himself well, accountable. I like that on every episode there's a... <laughs> There's a lesson. There's a happy ending. <laughs> there it is. Uh, also, when you first started describing that, just if you need all those things that you said at the very beginning, impulsive, you know, tries to make it right, just keeps making mistakes, just go fucking watch Breaking Bad, kids. If we're going to start fucking kids up with stories like that, just go watch Breaking Bad. Yeah, I mean, yes. to me, the, the 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 companion show about a vagina is far more interesting and actually far more difficult to understand. That's right. The, the, the big gape, the big gaper caper. Internally. You gotta feel more like you're looking within. Where yeah. I, it's called? Where in the world is Carmen yeah, San Diego? It's a, it's a what? <laughs> no, it's, it's a magical cave. Hard. All right, we're, we're okay, there we go. <laughs> I guess it is indeed. That's actually a great. That's a great cartoon for kids. The magical cave and how to mm -hmm. how to find your way. Mm -hmm. Our next story from my birthday, June eighteenth. You look up your own Florida man story for your birthday. Florida man with machete face tattoo accused of machete attack. Mm -hmm. We actually did this story. Did you? Yeah. A, to and to me, that's, that's like the most appropriate branding ever. I say I would say that's a little on the nose, and I mean the tattoo and the machete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean the fact. That, I almost wonder if it should be illegal to attack somebody. You kind of gave them perfect warning. Yeah, oh, for sure. You, you had literally advertised what you're all about. You I'm a that kind of guy. It's on my face. Did you not look at me first? Mm -hmm. Tattoo I mean, for the type of person that you are. You'll never work a day in your life. So me, <laughs> the sad part is that he has to look at the disappointment in everybody's face before he attacks him. I saw this coming. Yeah, uh, okay. you. You. yeah, it'd be great if you went the other way. I mean, that's a little hacky, if you ask me. No pun intended. I mean, <laughs> guy no wasn't ready. He was a sword guy. If he was yeah. more of a sword murderer. Yeah, more yeah. Of, a, more of a numbjuck guy. Numbjuck. I did not see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> you got me. It's the same exact tagline from the penis cartoon as well. Yeah, I did, not, I did not see that coming, and my God, it is coming. No, 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 I'm sorry. That's ice cream. <laughs> so before our last Florida Man story, thank you guys so much for being here. Any plugs, anything you'd like to mention yourselves, please? Daniel, you got stuff coming up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I play bingo every single month. I'm playing uh, this month where we raise money. If you win, you can actually win like prizes and money itself, but also... Your win can help donate money to no-kill animal shelters, big brothers, big sisters, or food banks in your area. Plus, I do uh, like a Hub City Movie Club. Uh, we're doing Stripes this month. Nice. And the best. Yeah, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And um, you can check out all of that stuff at uh, DanielVanKirk.com. And Rory Scovel and I have a podcast, but that's not for a few weeks. It's Pen Pals. It's in February. But if you're going to go to a podcast, come see Dumb People Town. Yeah, Dumb People Town on the 16th for us. Jay and I are still doing our daily podcast, uh, Scalabra Country, the virus edition, where we basically take one story a day and just break it down. This is what happened in this day. This is what's going on. We give our take on it and how it relates to the world. Great. Been a blast to do. We're on social media at Scalabra Brothers. Great uh, follow. People should be following you for, thank for, you for comedy and for the content that you guys are putting out with those stories. They're so great. Oh, thanks, man. So Instagram and TikTok and uh, on Twitter. And uh, we and our, we do a sports podcast if anybody's into sports. Sports. We do a sports podcast every Friday called View from the Cheap Seats and, of course, Dumb People Town. And we will see everybody here on the 16th. It is so much fun. Nowhere Comedy Club, 6.30 p.m. Go to eventbrite.com. Zach Alphanakis and then John Paul White, who's the lead singer of the Civil Wars. I, I sent him the lyrics because we have every music musician and we've had you know, we did it live at Largo. Amy Mann, Pete Yorn, mm -hmm. uh, Dave Longstreth, the lead singer of the Dirty Projectors. Oh, uh, we have we have the band Tennis, Colin Hay, the lead singer of Men at Work. We've had so many people do the theme song, and it's amazing. It's version of your theme song. It's so fun. 
Mac Lethal just wrote a sick rap for the last one that we did. So we uh, we have John Paul White, and I sent him the lyrics and the song, and he's like, I'm going to make it real sad. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Just like the people in the stories. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Which brings us then to our last one. A Florida man rescued an alligator from a python's death grip with his bare hands. Jack Hubbard of Lakeland went to Everglades Wildlife Management Area 3A because I guess one and two were closed. And met up with python hunter Mike Kimmel. (laughs) Hubbard Kimmel, a licensed snake hunter and owner operator of the Martin County trapping and removals were looking for pythons at night when they came across a large one, 10 feet long, that was trying to make a meal out of a small gator. The guy goes, that gator's still alive. The guy grabs the python, removes it from the water, pries it from the gator, and frees the gator into safety. Are we sure this isn't a storyline from that Dutch kid show? <laughs> <laughs> the python was red and white striped. Also, here's the thing. If it's your pet, if it's your pet, and you have obviously a personal vested interest in that animal. I'm hoping that you love that animal and treat it right. I will never argue with you for trying to save it. But all you're doing here is stopping nature. Yes. yes. Like like that animal, you, what you really did was like, oh, hey, guess what you did today? I prevented an animal from eating. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, made an animal died moments later from hunger and sadness. So you, know <laughs> like, did, you know what he did as a follow-up? He went into town and knocked a piece of pizza out of someone's hand. Yeah, he, you know, the, how the, dare you? Uh, well, the thing about Same that thing. is that it, it it's like he had to one up the guy who went into the pond to save his puppy from the alligator's mouth, which and didn't drop the cigar. Remember oh, that? Yes. That guy was yeah, even yeah. interviewed on Chris Cuomo. So I'm looking at that and I'm like, how is this guy shooting this? He's got like it's either on a tripod, mm-hmm. he either threw the puppy in there and was like, I, I got to do something to go viral here. I'm like, <laughs> there was no shakiness whatsoever, mm-hmm. like. Zapruder couldn't get like the president getting shot in the head. And meanwhile, you got three <laughs> angles and different things. You got a single shot. You got it. He's got drone shots of him rescuing this thing. I'm like, come on. <laughs> no, come right. come on so man. this guy's like, I got to one up that guy. Yeah. That guy's yeah. the ultimate no kill shelter, though. That guy's incredible. Can you imagine the watching like you're watching like you're deep in? It's like episode seven of Planet Earth. And they're like, a, a wildebeest is like going to just be a meal. And all of a sudden, some idiot from Florida walks into frame while like Attenborough's <laughs> trying to talk. And he just fucking like stops the animal and then like drags it away to save. He'd be like, what the fuck yeah, just happened? Enters the frame with a fully lit cigar. Will he drop it or will he save oh, the puppy? He got, he's going to get his he's going to get his Ron John surf shop shirt. Very dirty on this. <laughs> Very dirty. <laughs> dirty. Uh, the only gator you don't save in a situation like that is Aaron Hernandez. There you go. Not deserve saving. Point. Good point. Uh, Jason, Randy, Daniel, thank you so very much for being here on Last Week on Earth. Thank, thank you, buddy. Great to see Thanks you. See you soon. You guys are the best.